Hello and welcome to today's video devotion. We're in chapter 15 of the Gospel according to Luke. There we read that the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them a parable. See, he tells them this parable because they were grumbling about this fact, because their thought process was wrong in regards to those who were sinners in their eyes. What man of you, Jesus asked, having a hundred sheep, if he's lost, 90, lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? But he asks, if you're a shepherd, you've lost one of your hundred sheep, you're, you're going to go get that sheep, right? And he goes on to say, and, and when you've found him, you're going to rejoice. He says, just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Of course, the Pharisees weren't actually those who needed no repentance. But that's how they thought of themselves. They thought of themselves as the righteous ones, the rule followers, the ones who did the things that were required. Whereas these other sinners, they were lost. But Jesus says there's more joy over them than there is over you. He goes on and says, Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses a coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And again, when she finds it, she rejoices over the fact that she has found it. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Again, the same idea that when that which is lost is found, that is what makes joy erupt in heaven. Jesus goes on to tell a third story. It's one that's familiar with most of us. Uh, he said there was a young man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. He says, says, Dad, give me what, what, what I'm going to inherit. Give it to me now. I want it now. This was very offensive for him to ask. He's essentially saying, you know, Dad, you're, you're really no good to me unless you're dead. So, so I'd rather you be dead than with me. So give me what I would have if you were dead. Let's just pretend like you're dead. Let's do that. You can see why that would be offensive. Uh, but the father did it. He divided up the property between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey into a far country. You, you can understand what's going on here. It says specifically he went to a far country. It's not just that he wanted to start out for his own uh, on the land just right down the road. He went off to a far country. He made himself like a Gentile, right? One from the nations, not one who was a religious insider, who was one of the people of God. He goes off to this far off country and he squanders all he has with reckless living and a famine comes and at that point he has nothing and he's hungry and there aren't many opportunities. So he gets a job working for a citizen of that country who sends him off to care for the pigs. This again is objectionable. The pigs were unpure. They were unclean. They were not just physically unclean, but ceremonially unclean. And the Pharisees would have thought, oh my goodness, could anything be worse? Well, he was so hungry, we read, that, that he longed to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate. And no one gave him anything. Eventually, he comes to himself, the text says, and he thinks, wait, the workers at my house back home, who, who my father has hired, they eat better than I do. He said, what I'll do is I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and he went to come to his father. 
while he was still a long way off. His father saw him and felt compassion for him. And he does an amazing thing here. We read that the father ran and embraced him and kissed him. The idea is that he, he hiked up his skirts and ran, a thing that would be very undignified, but he wasn't concerned about his dignity. He was concerned only about his son, and he, he throws himself on him and hugs him and kisses him repeatedly. So great is his joy that his son has returned. Well, his son begins his rehearsed speech and says, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. He was right, of course. He was no longer worthy. But the father cuts him off right there. And he says, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this. My son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found. And they began to celebrate. You see, grace trumps merit. What a wonderful story if it ends right there, but it doesn't end right there, does it? Because there is another son. We remember his older son was in the field. He came and drew near to the house and heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come home and your father's killed a fattened calf and he has received him back safe and sound. But the brother was angry and refused to go in. And his father came out and entreated him much as the father had gone out to the son who had gone away. He comes out to this son as well and he entreats him. But he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you, I've never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, and you notice he doesn't refer to him as his brother. He says, this son of yours, who's devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fat calf for him. The father said to the son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad for this, your brother. Notice how he corrects him. It's not just my son, it's your brother. Was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. You see, the reality is that older brother was just as lost as the younger brother who had gone off. He saw his relationship to the father in transactional terms, just like the other son had. The sad thing is that at the end of the day, the other son had repented, but this son thought that he had followed the rules, he had done what was right, and he had earned what was coming his way. He represented the Pharisees, of course. They thought that they had earned the pleasure of God, and they had lost the joy of their salvation. Let us, as those who are the insiders, those who have the gospel, those who have the scriptures, those who have Jesus our Lord, never lose the joy of our salvation. Let us never lose sight of the fact that we once were lost, but now are found. Would you pray with me? Lord God, thank you for this truth that we do not earn our way with you, but rather your grace trumps our demerits. Lord, help us to live in the joy of that knowledge that we might always bring glory to you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow.